In section 2.2, we look at calculators and trig functions of an acute angle. So to do this section, you will need a scientific calculator. So previously, we've defined a degree to be 1 360th of a full rotation. In other words, one rotation is 360 degrees. Well, the degree measure itself can be broken down further. If you divide one degree into 60 equal parts, each one part is called one minute. And the notation for minute is this symbol. So one minute is 1 60th of a degree. So in other words, there are 60 minutes in every degree. Well, you can break it down even further. The next smallest unit angle measure is a second. A second is denoted with these symbols here, and it is 1 60th of a minute. So there are 60 seconds in every minute. So one degree is equal to 60 minutes, or one minute is equal to 1 60th of a degree, and one minute is 60 seconds, or one second is 1 60th of a minute. Now just to make sure we have a baseline understanding here, an angle that is one minute or one second is a tiny angle. Because an angle that is one degree is a tiny angle. In fact, these angles, one minute or one second, are so small that you wouldn't even be able to see it if you were to try to graph it. So this is a way of getting very, very precise measurements. So how do we measure angles using minutes and seconds? So if we look here in this table, we see the expression 52 degrees and 10 minutes. And that's exactly how we read it, 52 degrees, 10 minutes. In the next angle, we see 5 degrees, 27 minutes, and 30 seconds. And that is exactly how we read that. And in the third angle, very similarly, we have 13 degrees, 24 minutes, and 75 seconds. Now, this one is a little bit strange because notice that you have 75 seconds there. Remember, 60 seconds is one minute. So 75 seconds can be thought of as 60 seconds plus 15 seconds. But 60 seconds is one minute. So 75 seconds is one minute plus 15 seconds. So 13 degrees 24 minutes and 75 seconds is the same as 13 degrees plus 24 minutes plus 75 seconds. And this is the same as 13 degrees plus 24 minutes plus the 75 seconds can be broken down into one minute plus 15 seconds. So we could rewrite this as 13 degrees plus 25 minutes plus 15 seconds. And finally, if we just take away the plus signs here, we can rewrite this in the following way. So my point is 75 seconds is more than one minute. So if we take the minute out of there and add it to this one, that's how we get the 25 minutes. And if we do that, we would have 15 seconds left over. Now let's take a look at some basic computations with angles that are measured in degrees, minutes, and seconds. And I will just say that, you know, many calculators will do these computations for you. So you don't necessarily have to do these by hand. You can just use a calculator to do these for you. In order to do that, you need to know how your calculator works. So you need to be able to enter degrees, minutes, and seconds into your calculator. And I won't show you how to do that here because there are many different calculators and they all work a little bit differently. But I'll show you how to do it by hand just as a backup. 
So in the first computation here, we have 48 degrees, 49 minutes, added to 72 degrees, 26 minutes. So first, we'll just do normal addition of the degrees and the minutes. So adding up the minutes, we get 75 minutes. Adding up the degrees, we get 120 degrees. So we end up with 120 degrees and 75 minutes. But remember, 75 minutes is more than one degree, right? Because we know that 60 minutes is equal to one degree. So 75 minutes, which is 60 minutes plus 15 minutes, is equal to one degree plus 15 minutes. So if I have 120 degrees, 75 minutes, that's going to be the same as 121 degrees and 15 minutes. Now in the second example, it says to subtract 24 degrees, 14 minutes from 90 minutes. And this is an interesting computation because this is basically finding the complement of this angle. So in order to subtract, first of all, I'll write it down as 90 degrees minus 24 degrees, 14 minutes. But to subtract, we have to have some minutes here to take away the 14 minutes from. So what we do is we borrow one of the degrees from 90 degrees, and we convert that into 60 minutes. So 90 degrees is the same as 89 degrees in 60 minutes. So now I'm going to subtract 24 degrees and 14 minutes from this. And this time when you do the subtraction, you end up with 65 degrees and 46 minutes. Another way to measure angles is to use what's called decimal degrees. This is an alternative to using minutes and seconds to break down degrees into smaller parts. So for example, an angle like 30.5 degrees is the same as 30 and one half of a degree. And you can use more decimals as needed. We can also convert decimal degrees to degrees and minutes. To do this, we simply multiply the fractional part of the angle by 60 to convert it to minutes. So here's an example. Suppose I want to change 27.25 degrees to degrees and minutes. Well, 27.25 degrees is the same as 27 degrees plus 0.25 degrees. To change the 0.25 degrees into minutes, we're going to multiply the 0.25 by 60 minutes because in every degree we have 60 minutes. And 0.25 times 60 is 15. So 27.25 degrees is the same as 27 degrees in 15 minutes. Now, again, these computations can be done on a calculator. Every calculator does them a little bit differently. So I'm not going to talk about how to do this precisely on a calculator. But again, you should consult your calculator, and they all come with a manual. And if you read that manual, it will show you how to do these computations. Before we move on, let's just make sure we understand the concept here. So let's change 10 degrees 45 minutes into decimal degrees. So to do this, we just want to first realize that 10 degrees 45 minutes is the same as 10 degrees plus 45 minutes. And then now I'm going to take the one minute and notice that one minute is equivalent to one sixtieth of a degree. So I have 10 degrees plus 45 times one sixtieth of a degree, which is 45 sixtieths of a degree. And 45 divided by 60 is 0.75 degrees. So this ends up being 10.75 degrees. And again, this can all be done on a calculator. Now to get into the more important examples, we want to use our calculator to do computations with degrees or degrees, minutes, and seconds. First thing you want to make sure you do is put your calculator in degree mode. This is very important. 
Then you simply press the indicated keys. So in this example, we want to find the cosine of 37.8 degrees. Now on some scientific calculators, you actually enter the angle first, 37.8, and then you would hit the cosine key. And you don't have to type in the degree symbol. On other graphing calculators and other scientific calculators, it actually goes in the order that you see it. So you enter it just like you see it here. You would hit the cosine button first, and then 37.8, and then hit the enter or equal key, and you should get the value. Now, if you do that on a calculator, the cosine of 37.8 degrees is 0 0.790155. Zero, one, two, four. Now, when we find trig functions of angles, the default number of decimal places that we like to round to is four decimal places. So if we round this to four decimal places, we get approximately 0 0.7902. And you will see this here. couple more examples. Let's find the sine of 58.75 degrees. Now again, you would just enter that into your calculator. So if you have a calculator, just follow along, try to do it yourself. Either enter the angle 58.75 and then hit the sign button or hit the sign button and then enter 58.75 and then press the enter key. And when you do that and you round to four decimal places, you should get 0.8549. The next example is a little bit more interesting. Here we want to find the secant of 78 degrees. Now the thing to notice here is that your calculator does not have a secant key. So to do this, we need to remember that the secant of an angle theta is the same as 1 divided by the cosine of theta. That's an identity. So if I want to do the secant of 78 degrees, this is the same as 1 divided by the cosine of 78 degrees. And now to finish this, all we need to do is literally type this into our calculator by doing 1 divided by cosine 78, or you would do 78, and then hit cosine, and then hit the 1 over x key. Now, most calculators these days are going to be done this way, right? But some calculators are still done the other way, so you just have to practice with this. So again, on a calculator, I'm going to hit 1, and then divided by, and then cosine, a lot of calculators will put parentheses after the cosine, and then we simply type 78 and hit enter. The other way to do it that they're showing here is you could hit cosine of 78 and hit enter, and that will give you this value. And then you would just hit the x to the negative 1 key, which takes the reciprocal of that number. There's nothing wrong with this, but I personally think that this method is a little bit easier to follow. Anyway, when you do that and you practice right now on your own, you should get 4.8097 when we round to four decimal places. So pause the video, whatever you need to do, and try it yourself to make sure that you know how to use your calculator. And if you're having trouble using your calculator, you should see your instructor for help. Now we want to know how to reverse the process. So in example eight, notice that we have tangent of theta is equal to 3.152. How do we find the angle theta? This involves using the inverse function for tangent, which is the inverse tangent. Now we'll talk about how to do that on the calculator, but first let's understand what's happening mathematically. So if we know that tangent of theta is equal to 3.152, in order to solve for theta, I need to cancel the tangent here. Now, we cannot divide by tangent. 
Instead, what we have to do is use the function that we can apply to tangent that will get rid of the tangent. And this is the concept of an inverse function. So I'm going to take the inverse tangent of the left side and the inverse tangent of the right side. When you do this, the inverse tangent and the tangent will cancel out, leaving us with just theta. And then on the right-hand side, we have the inverse tangent of 3.152. Now we just need to type this value into our calculator. Now for most of you, your calculator will work like this. And so what you'll need to do is hit the inverse tangent key, then type in 3.152, and then hit enter. Now, the way you access the inverse tangent key on your calculator is you're going to find the tangent key, and then right above the tangent key, you should see the inverse tangent. So it should look something like this on your calculator. To access the function that is above a key, you have to use either the inverse or the second key on your calculator. So you will hit the inverse or the second key, and then you'll hit the tangent button, and that's how you get your inverse tangent. After that, type in 3.152 and hit enter, and then we'll just record the value that we get here. So when I do that on my calculator, I get 72.3979. 0744. And from there, we're just going to round this to the nearest tenth of a decimal degree. So if I do that, I get theta is approximately equal to 72.4 degrees. Let's try another example to make sure that we understand what's going on here. So on this next example, we know that sine of angle A is 0.3733, and we want to find angle A. Now, once you get the hang of this, you won't necessarily have to show these steps, but we're still kind of learning this, so I want to show you what's really going on here. So if sine of A is 0.3733, to solve for A, I am going to take the inverse sine of the left side, and also the inverse sine of the right side. When we do that, the inverse sine and the sine cancel out. We have angle A left over, and on the right-hand side, we have the inverse sine of 0.3733. Go ahead and enter that into your calculator, more than likely using this method here. And when you do that, you should get A is equal to approximately 21.9 degrees. And again, to do this, you need to make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. Now this next problem is exactly the same thing, except that now we have secant of angle B is 1.0768, and we want to find angle B. Now the problem is, most calculators do not have an inverse secant key. On, their calc on the uh, calculator. So what we have to do is we have to remember that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Now the book takes this approach here, and you can certainly follow that approach if you want, but I think there's a much simpler way to explain it. So if secant of B is 1.0768, then we know that cosine of B is the reciprocal of that number. So now, if I want to get cosine all by itself, I apply the inverse cosine to both sides. So we will have the inverse cosine of the cosine of B is equal to the inverse cosine of 1 over 1 1.0768. And of course, what happens here is the inverse cosine and the cosine cancel out. And we end up getting B is equal to the inverse cosine of 1 over 1 1.0768. Now to type this in on your calculator, again, you'll be using this more than likely. We're going to access our inverse cosine key. 
And then what's really important is you need to put a left parentheses here. And then you can do 1 divided by 1.0768. Or you can use the x to the negative 1 key, which is a key that's used to take a reciprocal. Personally, I don't really like using the x to the negative 1 key. I think it's better just to type it in kind of like you see it. 1 divided by 1.0768. And when you do that, your calculator should give you an approximate value of 21.77 degrees. And we'll round into the nearest hundredth here because in the beginning, they did ask us to round to the nearest hundredth. One final example, just to make sure that we understand the point here. It says cotangent of C is 0 0.0975, and we want to solve for C. So you can read what the book has done there. I'm going to do this without accessing the book. Cotangent of C is 0 0.0975, when we know that tangent of C will be the reciprocal of this value. Now to get C by itself, we use an inverse tangent. We apply that to both sides. And we should get C is equal to the inverse tangent of 1 over 0 0.0975. Plug this into your calculator. And in this case, if we round to the nearest whole degree, we should get approximately 84 degrees. You must practice doing this on your own calculator to make sure that you know how to input it.